Hey everybody, welcome back to the I Like Birds podcast. I'm your host, Zach Rippey. Thank you so much for tuning in today. No intro music. We're actually outside recording under a tree by the pond. And the last time we recorded under a tree, we were in Africa. And I, I don't know, I kind of like the vibe of it, man. It's kind of it's kind of fitting of the show. You know, we're out here with the birds. Um, I mean, there's no intro music, but you guys know what the intro is by now. You know, we're we're not trying to be too fancy with it. We're just trying to keep it organic, genuine, authentic. Um, I think I said that twice. Uh, Vulnerable. Uh, I was speaking to Rob Ross, who is, like I told you guys on the last episode, if you guys have checked out that one, it's only been out a couple days, but uh, he's actually been looking over my book and gave me some valuable edits. And one of the things he was talking about was how my generation, at least so he feels like my generation, at least through listening through the show and just the audience and him knowing just kind of uh, the direction that uh, the faith community is going in, it seems like a very authentic, vulnerable, um, out in the open, transparent way of the faith that has been missing in the in the Christianity space for quite some time. And uh, he comes from the generation of there being kind of buttoned up, your outer image, it's more like religion instead of relationship. And I think you guys know, at least from this show, that uh, I preach a lot about just the having the relationship with Christ uh, instead of just acting like you have it all together on the outside. It's all about on what Christ is doing on the inside. Even if you are dropping the ball in something or you still need to be delivered for something from something or uh, you need help with something. And I was experiencing this today myself, guys, where I was feeling like so exhausted of needing Jesus's help for stuff. You know, I'm so like I love him and I'm so grateful for him. Obviously, I'm through the through the moon about him. I talk about him almost every single day, if not every day. And uh, needing him for something has been uh, every single day. It's been, you know, it's just been tiring, you know, especially right now we're in the season. You guys know what season we're in with the house, uh, trying to get in there before uh, baby Zeke comes um, and everything else I've just been sharing with you guys. And of course, today, is a very special and significant day that's heavy on my heart and it's a spiritual day as always um but when we're talking about this it gets even heavier man it's today's armani's birthday you know it's february his birthday is february 29th and him and i have always celebrated it on the 28th and march 1st you know we went hard both days um you know obviously he squeezed his family in there but him and i had some great birthday memories on this day and I like celebrating this day because his birthday is February so this is the last day of February and um, it's a Monday you know it's just like starting the week off with this it was just heavy on my heart today and I was having to deal with electricity stuff or excuse me electricity stuff and water stuff and um, and a, a driveway you know set up so I'm over here calling people as soon as I wake up and it feels like I missed a step because we didn't turn on the water in time uh, and now I'm kind of rushing the water company to come unlock the box so that the septic people can put the water there on Wednesday and uh, it's just stressful man it feels like there's always one more thing and then of course they want more money you know it's like dang bro it's like I'm so tired of writing checks and uh, calling people and just setting things up and I have to go out there and take a picture of the water meter anyway not to complain and get on this you know rabbit trail but the point is is that yo your boy was struggling this morning you know and um, I was taking it out on on my kids or excuse my kid Malachi just himself Um, and I was kind of just, you know, being, um, I wasn't being, my speech wasn't, wasn't the best it could be. I was complaining. I was just, um, I don't know. I was being like a little boy about it, honestly, and just throwing like a little fit about having to fill out another form, another application, call people. It's just, I'm just done with it, bro. I'm just done with it. And I feel like when I'm doing all this stuff and I'm, I'm so busy doing all this, this man stuff, I guess you could say, and Catherine says, put on your big boy pants, you know? <laughs> and uh, she's right, man. You gotta, it, it really takes um, the blood of Jesus and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to make you a man. I truly believe that. At least a man that um, is doing the right thing and, and trying not to, because my flesh is so selfish. I'm just like, why do I have to be the only one doing this? And, you know, I was saying mean stuff to her. Like, I'm the only one that's dealing with this, you know, but she's dealing with it too. She's just dealing with it in, in different ways and in her role. And, um, so yeah, man, my flesh just sucks, bro. I just need Jesus, like, a lot, a lot. But luckily, after that, you know, I got a, a minute to just kind of take a deep breath, bring some Christ into my life. And that's the thing, too. I was trying to uh, start my day off on the right foot, and it got interrupted a few times. You know, I was listening to a Tony Evans sermon, drinking some coffee outside. It's the first day in Texas that it's been nice weather in, in, in a long time. So 
Uh, I was trying to enjoy it and it just wasn't going well. And then I was just, I got the bad news while outside and came inside trying to do stuff on the computer. Couldn't find a stinking PDF uh, editor and stuff like that. And I'm just a mess, bro. I'm just tired of dealing with this stuff and I'm just exhausted and I'm tired of asking God to like, you know, come through. And I know he's coming through. I know it's on his time and, you know, it's like, you know it, but you're still just like exhausted from it, you know? So that's when I just realized today, man, it's just out of my control completely at this point. You know, it's like go with the flow. If you have to find new things to do and new, new documents and stuff like that uh, to submit, then that's what we got to do. But as for right now, I'm so sorry, guys, I have to pause because these dogs uh we got some dogs guys i don't know if i shared that news with you guys so i can share that news with you guys real quick we got some great pyrenees dogs and they're awesome because they're going to be for the land that we're moving out to um but right now i let them outside with me to come by the pond and now the neighbor's dogs are barking at them and um so i feel like i should probably go get them but at the same time i'm doing a pod like they got to respect that uh but no i gotta pause it and go get them so i'll be back all right, guys, I am back. I just went ahead and chased down the dogs. They were like 40 pounds or something like that each, and I had to carry them over the fences, and I'm out of breath. But, hey, you guys got to be a small part of it. And it kind of kept my cool for the most part. Normally, I kind of lash out on the dogs, but uh, I was able to hold it together and just get them back safely and, of course, gave them a little, a little fatherly love and, you know, a little spank on the booty and told them not to do it again. But, you know, sometimes you just got to do little things like that. And they get the bigger picture because they knew they were in the wrong. They knew they were in the wrong. They took off. They went to the neighbor's spot. The other dogs were barking at them. They wouldn't come back when I was calling them. But anyway, normally they're great dogs. All right. Ooh, man, I'm tired, out of breath. I just walked a good distance. So bear with me here. All right. I appreciate you guys actually power through in this. And if you're in the car or something right now, do me solid. Just take some deep breaths in and deep breath out. All right, because we're about to get into some serious stuff here, all right? I uh, I went through the fence and got barbed wire on my stinking Armani Vibin' with Jesus shirt, which is a bummer. But, hey, it's an excuse to order more. Just put it on the credit card, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, man, that's kind of where I was going with it, man. It was this heavy day. I know it's Armani's birthday today. Uh, started off on a bad foot, on a bad note. Wasn't really rocking with Jesus. Uh, I was trying to, like I said, I don't know if I told you guys this or if I got interrupted last time, but I was in the, I was listening to a sermon and everything, trying to just get my mind right. And then a whole bunch of stuff just kind of came in the way of that. So, but anyway, I go inside, I talk to my mother-in-law about um, just the book that I'm working on and she gave me some great, great notes and stuff like that. And so anyway, we're talking about this thinking, um, back to the beginning, man, I'm all over the place right now. I feel like I should just start over. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to start over. No, I'm not starting over. I'm one take Drake. You guys got to live with the experience. Live with the experience. We're in real time. We got the dogs here. We're actually in a little hideout right now that uh, Noah made. We put some chairs and tables in here, and we cleared out a little hideout on the Mansfield land that we're at right now. And we're about to move over to the Operator land soon, baby. So super pumped about that. Obviously, that's the biggest thing that's going on in life right now, other than, you know, a child, another child on the way. Uh, and we got the dogs. So life is crazy, man. But... I was thinking about the vulnerability stuff, you know, and just being, and that's, that's the thing, man. The show is very vulnerable. It's very open. It's very, uh, me just kind of sharing with you guys my walk with God and just my life and stuff. And, you know, I'm a writer, so I feel like that's like what's inside of me coming out and being able to communicate that through the podcast has been very healthy for me. Uh, and it's been very, uh, beneficial for, um, just even writing, you know, when I, when I sit down behind the keys, it feels like, I'm able to formulate ideas a lot better because I have the podcast and because I have such, you know, great people that tune in and listen to it and support it and show love and it impacts them because, you know, I could be going through something that they're going through or they could just need a boost in their faith. And, you know, that that's what this show is. It's encouraging, but it's also vulnerable. So I'm trying to over here think about a word that's not like vulnerable Christianity because I don't know, I kind of associate that with weak. So my mother-in-law was trying to help me with some ideas for what's a better name for vulnerable. And she said one that was kind of like off-putting at first. But then when I started thinking about it, it started making sense. She said naked Christianity. Yeah, think about that for a second. What are your thoughts on it? Naked Christianity. You know, we have um, so many different, I don't know, denominations, branches, um, you know, uh, the charismatic Christian movement, the evangelical Christian movement, you know, but I don't know. And I'm not trying to, you know, put myself in any kind of box. I think that's the point, though. It's like this is a naked 
uh, Christianity because it's out in the open. You know, I try to be as, as very as open as, as possible. You know, we got to keep some things reserved and, and not out publicly, of course. You know, sometimes I don't know what, what that line is. Uh, and I'm still working through that of what to share, what not to share. Uh, but in, the, in, in real time, I share what I feel like God has put on my heart to share. So the naked reminded me when she said naked, it really my mind went to Adam in the garden and how he was just in relationship with God. And it was out in the open and he didn't think about himself as naked. He was just being how he was created. And that's kind of what I feel like this show and this ministry that I'm on kind of represents. It's uh, it's realizing that you're never going to have I shouldn't say never, never such a strong word that you should never use. Never say never. Justin Bieber, that's actually uh, <laughs> Noah and Malachi's favorite song right now. Uh, that one and uh, You Smile by Jay Biebs. Tune, tune in if you uh, you like some Jay Biebs. But uh, my kids love that one. Obviously, Baby Shark is a hit right now with Malachi. But anyway, back to the back to the whole point of this. Uh, you should never say never. Um, dang, that wasn't the point. See, I, I go off and I, and I forget where I was going with this, but... Um, but yeah, man, that's what this, I, I, I think that I'm not trying to put myself in this box. That's where I was going. Or, or, but it's, that's the point is just being out in the open with it and uh, bringing people in and just letting them see that like, yo, um, that fruit is is a process. You know, that fruit that's growing on you is a process. That sanctification is a process. Uh, there's things that I've been delivered from and I feel like I've overcome through the power of Christ. But there's still things I'm, I'm working towards. And I try to be open with that for you guys and be able to. You know, I never want people to, you know, follow me. I want people to follow he, you know, and I want it. I want, that's the thing. The whole ministry is about, you know, what God is doing through me and what he can do through you as well. You know, when, when you put on for him, when you're when you're making time for him, when you're thinking about him, when you're when you're perplexed about something, you're asking questions and just getting in those deep, deep thoughts of like what we're doing here, you know, and what our relationship with God looks like. How does he feel about us? And I was um so I want to share a couple of notes that I wrote down today, just some things that she said. She was, um, there was so much goodness and so many just like little gems that I wish I had it like recorded just so I can pull from them. But she's talking about just like, you know, even in the midst of your busyness, in the midst of what you got going on, it's like God is, he's always on the throne waiting for you to approach. And that just really hit me like a bag of bricks because it's just like he's right there every time, you know, and I, I understand that he's. He bends down to listen. Uh, his his ear bends down when we talk about him. It talks about that in the book of Malachi, and she was even telling me there's this verse, and I haven't seen this verse myself, and I'm just kind of like I gotta go look it up and find it, where it talks about like when when Peter was getting maybe it's an Acts, and I struggled through Acts. I read it, but I was kind of like in and out almost. You know, I I, I struggled to read it. Um, so maybe it's in there, but it, where it talks about when Peter's getting stoned or crucified, that God basically was like over the throne looking down like you know checking to see like what was all going down like he was caring about the situation so much so that he was you know he gave it the time of day to and it gave a visual of him like basically on the throne looking down like i don't know it's just hard it's I, obviously i'm butchering it a little bit over here but the the mental picture of that scripture is just heavy and it just shows just how how much god is just always there for us he's like our he really is our father who's just protecting us and and loving us and, and even if we're slipping up or we're, we're acting like foolish kids. He's like, he's there for us, those that are his, you know, and it's just such an honor to be um, a brother and sister in Christ and just to be uh, walking, walking with him, you know, even, even when you just like, we had this message yesterday at church and kind of like, oh man, it made me feel like, not like, it's just, it was one of those, those heavy ones where you kind of look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, man, is there fruit on my life? You know, and I was over here questioning that last night with Catherine and just kind of talking about it with her. And uh, she was definitely saying that she sees the change still and it's, definitely a process and and it's it's not it's the long game guys we're in the long we're in the long con (laughs) you know the long con that's from the show lost i hit him with the long con sawyer (laughs) if you guys know lost shout out but um it's the long game man it's not the short term it's 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 what you do in the short term and the moments that god puts in front of you that grows you for the long term and i'll I'll testify that about that right now what i'm about to share with you guys and you know there's so many other things i could be doing right now but i wanted to stop and just kind of reflect on this because, uh, yeah, we put out a podcast on Sunday, but today's Armani's birthday, and I feel like a lot of people would tune in today and just kind of be reminded of the things I was reminded about. And I, I feel like, you know, Armani's definitely with Jesus right now, you know, and he's going to, um, his life is still living, if that makes sense. Like, Armani's name is still 
It's still around. It's still floating and it's still being used for the glory of God. I truly believe that. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Even last night, we had another donation come through uh, from somebody who rocks with this show and loves Armani. And um, it was just incredible, man. It's such a blessing. And, and like I said, guys, like, you know, God is the provider every single time. And I'm so honored to just be able to like be able to say that with uh, with conviction and just like with with 100 percent certainty that that's real. Like he's the one that comes through. It's nothing on my own doing. And then I got my Fiverr gigs back uh, momentarily. We'll see if they last. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be pessimistic about it, but I got my Fiverr gigs, promoted gigs back. And I already got I got an order on Friday and I got an order uh, today, actually. So it's like God is still providing even in the midst of the chaos, you know, even in the midst of. You know, you got a lot of stuff going on, but he's still going to throw you little little nuggets of, hey, I got you to get you to the next step, you know. And it's, it's a beautiful thing, but it is the long game, guys. It's the long game. And Armani put some stuff in, in front of me today. I, I shouldn't say Armani put some stuff. Jesus put stuff in front of me today on a day where it's a spiritual heavy, heavy day because I know Armani's rocking with Jesus right now. You know, he's vibing up there. So um, a number thing happened today where it was all like if you do the the... Armani was born in a certain in 92 and if you flip 92 is 29 is his birthday and that's actually the score that uh, Catherine got on one of the blood tests that she was that she was needing to hit uh, in order to, to show some progress uh, with her platelets you know I haven't really shared too much about that with you guys uh, we've been in some a lot of personal prayer about it because we are uh, really hoping and praying that we don't have to go to the hospital for the birth uh, Catherine wants to have a um, she wants a home delivery in our new home. That's the, that's the dream. <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the big goal. Uh, but if we have to have the baby in my mother-in-law's house, we will, uh, definitely not have it in the RV, but she didn't want to have to go to the hospital. We had a really bad experience last time and hospitals are even worse now based on, uh, the vid and everything else. Um, and the bur- bureaucrats and the insurance companies and everybody want their hand in your pocket. So we experienced that firsthand last time. They wouldn't even let us leave the hospital unless we paid like five grand up, up top. And, um, yeah, it's just, it just wasn't a good situation. So uh, they kept interrupting us in the room. They, they called Malachi and Malachi. Like it was, a, it was a whole thing, you know. So we're really praying for that. And her platelets have been the uh, issue that's uh, making us have to spend extra money on, on just uh, appointments and uh, supplements and different visits and blood tests. And it's just been a, a big thing, man. It's been life has been throwing curveballs, but God is working through it, man. He raised them up from 83 to 92. And I told Catherine today, I was like, wow, I mean, that's the year Armani was born. And if you flip that 92, that's his birthday, 29, you know, especially on a day where it's like, dang, man, you feel shorted because Armani's birthday is the 29th and today's the 28th. So it's like, is it tomorrow? Like, do we celebrate tomorrow today? It's like, come on, man, you know, but it just shows that the power of, of just like faith, you know, it's like even even and that's the thing bro everything that happens is is because of god so it's therefore it's not a coincidence you know it's like god is the designer and the creator and the the orchestrator of, of all life of all things especially in a, a, the life of a believer you know so he puts those thoughts in my head to make me think like oh that's like that's tied to armani in a way you know like armani's blessing it and i already told you guys a story about our address being his jersey number and our uh, we couldn't get a loan and then our mortgage company was 21st mortgage mortgage loan his number again and there's just been multiple things that have happened like that where you're just kind of like oh Armani's still working with us and rocking with us and 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 you know make giving giving Jesus the elbow for us you know like and and maybe it's and and you know that's a theory and that's a belief but maybe it's maybe it's just you know your your own relationship with Christ you know and he's he's putting those gems and like those uh that those revelations in you to keep you going those signs and wonders you know what I mean like that's a thing if you believe in the miracle signs and wonders what do you call that you know, that would be considered that. So I think you guys are rocking with me on that. It's hard when you're just one man, one man Sam over here and you don't have like a, a back and forth on that. But that's why it's good to have people in front of you. You know, my, my mother-in-law was talking about like, hey, I'm, I'm sorry. I wish I was like uh, a more active reader of your, your work and your writings and listening to your pod and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but you're like ministering to me and you're listening to me and fellowshipping with me and loving on me in real life. You know what I mean? Like I need I need you as much as I need, you know, the the listeners or the the, the audience or the or the fans, or the support system, or, you know, the ministry, you know, she's, she has, her, she's ministering to the person in front of her every day as well, and she's uh, been a very good uh, mentor in that, and being able to see that, and just understand that, because even today, man, this is the, the big, this is what I kind of want to get on here and talk to you guys about, because this crazy thing just happened, where I'm, I'm going on a walk with Malachi, and I was telling, telling Cheryl, my mother-in-law, how I was just kind of, uh, just struggling with, you know, 
have because my wife has gone at the appointments a lot now and I'm having to take care of the kids more than ever. I was homeschooling, uh, taking care of both of them. And it's like, I don't know, that's not always my it's, it should be my role. You know, of course, it should be both the parents roles, but that's not that, that's not my role. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm the let's go let's get after it kind of dad, you know, but uh, it's been it's been humbling, you know, and it's like I have a purpose in that. And that's what I'm called to do. I'm called to my family first and my ministry fourth. You know, it's like God, wife, um, kids, ministry, you know, it's like that's that's the order. If you're if you only had four choices, you know, your ministry comes last out of all those things. And I, I'm able to minister to my wife and my children when I'm loving on them and taking care of them and spending time with them and and going on walks with them. So I went on a walk with Malachi today and normally I just put in the, the earphones and I pot it up. But for some reason, I just didn't feel like I wanted to in that moment. So I go and I'm walking by this house that's been on the market for a while. And uh, it's the house that's kind of like a few houses down from my in-laws crib and a beautiful house. It looks like a little castle, <laughs> you know, it's like brick, red brick on the outside and just looks gangster. Right. And I've actually, it's been on the market a couple of times now since I've uh, been part of the fam. Uh, and since I've been out in Texas, at least. And I, I went online to see on Zoom, actually, or not Zoom. Wow. Zillow. Uh, see, I'm over here thinking, uh, anyway, uh, Zillow. I went on there and looked at the the pictures and stuff like that, seeing what the price was. Cause you never know. What if I came in with some money? I was trying to ball out and buy a crypto in the same street, you know? Uh, <laughs> uh, this house was like 600 racks though. So I was like, ah, you know, maybe in a few years, I ain't got that kind of bread and I don't think that kind of bread's coming in anytime soon. So we, we gonna pass. We're going to do a little manufactured home and put it on some land in Alvarado. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you for listening and putting up with me. But uh, yeah, so I, the, the, I walked by and then I'm like, oh, y'all moving uh, somebody out or moving somebody in? And then the movers were like, oh, we're moving somebody in. And they were just chilling. They weren't actually doing any work, which was kind of funny. Uh, and then I like keep walking down. It's a big driveway. And then I see the owner of the house come out, the new owner of the house. I find out it's him. And he comes out and uh, we, we shake hands. I introduce myself and uh, he invites me inside to see the, the new things that he's done with the house. And he's done like a lot of things. He put in a brand new, beautiful staircase, guys. I'm talking like out of a movie. It's so, so gorgeous. Wow. White with some wood, like, ooh, looking gorgeous. New floors, beautiful wood floors, brand new chimney fireplace. It's looking Gucci. Uh, we go over to the kitchen and you're, I'm talking just marble countertops, uh, white white cabinets with the, with the nice little appliances uh, to go with it. Uh, he took out the old um, wooden, like... Um, entertainment center and he just put in this beautiful like uh just set up man it was just the pool was looking gangster you know like he, he it, it, it was beautiful what he was doing to the place and we ended up talking right and this dude was just he told me that we talked about life guys we talked about life we talked about money we talked about uh what it doesn't bring and what you would buy those the other things that you would buy with that money if you had it. You would buy a wife. You would buy your children if you couldn't have some. You would buy good health if you didn't have it. You would buy a home if you, if I mean, obviously you could buy a home with money, but you would exchange, you know, your, your money and your, your money blessings for other blessings if you had the money blessing. You know, it's ba- he was saying that it's balanced. You know, God gives people, um, God gives people the, the blessings that they're supposed to have and not everybody has all the blessings, right? And, you know, I introduced myself, then he told me his name was Muhammad, right? And I didn't kind of really associate it uh, with anything other than just a name at the time. I mean, I did a little bit. There was like a little kind of like little door, but I didn't really go down the door because I was just focused on um, on meeting him in the house. And I was holding Malachi as well while we went through the house. And all right, guys, I just got back to back phone calls while recording uh, from the water company, electricity company. So, yeah, this is a unique episode, but I appreciate you being here and just keeping up with me and being okay with the little uh, segment breaks. Uh, I mean, I could have advertisement there and that would be even worse, right? So, it's a good thing I just am picking up where I left off in a weird location. But uh, so I'm talking to this gentleman, right? And I really feel this way. He, I feel like this gentleman, uh, because of his spiritual truths that he was telling me, because of his vibe and just demeanor, he had like the God molecule, right? So, I was thinking to myself, he knew the father, but he probably did not know the son. Right. So and I say this and I, I don't want this to be taken the wrong way. I don't know if theologically that could be possible. You know, you see John 14, Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life through me and whatnot. But it, but hear me out here. It's, it's as if his entire life was for kind of this moment. And not to say that, you know, braggadocious in any way, but 
uh, what I'm about to share with you guys is just, it really shows just the power of Jesus putting people in front of you to minister to. It's the one in front of you. Even in the midst of me feeling like I'm not, I'm, I'm over here not living in my most purposeful life because I'm dealing with this house stuff. I'm, you know, on walks with Malachi where I'm, we're in a really stressful season and we're just trying to get to the next chapter. Uh, God is still like saying like, yo, you're still living out the calling that I put on you, regardless of your job title, regardless of your, your, your bank account, your income, regardless of your success in ministry in the eyes of other people in the church and all this stuff, right? It doesn't matter about that. It matters about the oneness in front of you and also being vocal about it and being a voice box for Jesus in this season, right? Which I continue to be despite me feeling like I'm getting my butt kicked, right? So he starts telling me, and that's, this is why I feel like it was very, um, it was very God orchestrated um, for him to get in this moment and to kind of hear about Jesus, the fir- not the first time, but, you know, obviously through, through Zach Rippey, right? So I'm sitting there. He starts sharing with me that he's on, he was just on, va- the reason he's in this house, guys, is because he was on vacation in Africa. And guess who was just in Africa? Your boy. Zach Rippey, all right? So I'm over here like, dude, I was just in Africa. That's crazy. And he was like, yeah, I was vacationing in Northern Africa. And my phone starts going off. The Ring app, you know, if you guys are familiar with the Ring app, uh, it is a security device feature that you keep at your house that has like a camera and stuff like that. His Ring system, his app was blowing up, right? It was going off. He looks on the Ring app and he sees his house on fire while on vacation. His home that he lived in with his family and his daughter on fire. His daughter's room was the one that got hit the hardest with the fire. All right, I'm back again. (laughs) My guy just woke up from his nap. (laughs) Oh, man, this is a fun one. But yeah, man, so I have a few minutes. I'm going to wrap it up with this story. It's awesome. All right, so uh, house is on fire. His daughter's room was the one that was hit the hardest. He, He comes home, and he doesn't have a home to go to after his vacation, right? Next thing you know, things, you know, unravel. He's probably in a difficult season. He kind of was talking about how he was in a difficult season. And he ended up finding the house that he just purchased, you know, and the person that was supposed to buy it, the loan fell through. So he was able to scoop it up, right? So he's all excited about his new home. And I'm excited about my new home at the same time. I'm sharing him the good news about my home and what we got going on. And uh, he's asking questions about the neighborhood and stuff like that. And uh, so obviously this, there's a reason this, all this happened. Right. And then, so I started, he asked me what I did for work and I kind of just started talking about, you know, uh, freelance writing and, um, all, and then I transitioned over to the ministry and I'm already wearing my, my vibing with Jesus shirt and my, I like birds hat today in the spirit of Armani. And just obviously it keeps me in, uh, in good spirits as well throughout the day. I haven't had a bad day when I put on the shirt. Let's just say that. And I think that's a tribute to, to my boy and, I'm really excited about being able to say that uh, after wearing it about five, six times now. And I know a lot of people are probably wearing theirs today or tomorrow. And uh, it just means a lot, right? So anyway, so I'm talking, to this, I'm talking to him and I started talking about Christ. And I ended up asking him, you know, about like, I, I just got straight to it. I was like, so do you believe Jesus is the son of God? You know, because he was talking about God, but he was, he, he told me he was Muslim. And he's talking about like what a prophet or what a preacher, a uh, Muslim preacher was preaching about and stuff like that. And he, the, the, the Muslim preacher, you know, he said something really profound as well and another spiritual truth. I was like, that's deep. And then so I just kind of, you know, I didn't like blurt it out. But at the same time, I was like, yo, God, give me the, give me the words. You know, uh, you put this on me right now, like to kind of ask about the faith and talk about my faith and his. And next thing you know, we're talking about uh, he believes that Jesus is a prophet, but not the son of God. And uh, I was basically hitting him with the argument, not the argument. I hate that word. I was hitting him with the, the question of like, well, if you believe he was a prophet, that means he only spoke truth. So therefore, it's like he couldn't have lied when he said he was the son of God. But then he told me that the Quran doesn't even say that he said that he was the son of God. The Quran says something completely different. And I was like, oh, OK, like that makes sense, I guess. And then he was talking about how like they believe he, he was a prophet and how he resurrected and ascended. And I'm like, so that doesn't mean he's the son of God. He's like, well, this the Quran says this about something about how he basically told God, like, you know, my heart when I said that I'm the son of God, uh, basically alluding to like not meaning it literally or and whatnot. So I was just kind of like a little bit confused about that. And the next thing you know, we're like enjoying the convo so much that, uh, he, I was like, well, I, I said, I've never read the Quran. He's like, I've never read the Bible. He goes, I'll bring you a copy. And I was like, I'll bring you a copy. And then we shook hands and we just kept it moving. And then he, it was just a good vibe. It was an awesome experience to be able to talk to a 
somebody of that faith that has a actual understanding of the faith, you know, cause I've talked to this, this girl who is a big time hater of Zach Rippey and I like birds and Jesus. And, um, she didn't even know what she believed in. She was like believing in, uh, the Muslim faith through her mom. Like she was asking her mom the questions that I was asking her about when we were trying to talk about the faith. Right. So it was just really cool to actually experience somebody that, uh, had a, a heck of back of what they believed in, you know? So it was really interesting. Uh, it was a moment that uh, I feel like was for a reason. And I hope that um, even that little bit of being a seed and sowing that seed of just not being um, afraid to uh, speak about Christ to a Muslim, you know, like that was a big moment for me. And uh, it was just really cool because we we had it was it went great. You know, there was no like divisiveness. There was no like division. There was no um, any kind of like hostile energies at all. It was all good vibes. And uh, I think that's what it's about, man. It's like, I don't know. And maybe it's not at a church I'm supposed to be at, to be be honest, because it's like that doesn't happen at church a lot of times. You know, Uh, I met this great gentleman um, at church this past Sunday, which had nothing to do with like a preacher or anything. It was just a a, a God-ordained situation. I go into church about seven minutes before the service starts. They have a little clock down on the screen. Everybody's mingling in the lobby and I'm like, oh, I ain't really trying to mingle. You boys had a long week. I just need to get, I just need to be here for Jesus today. So I, I went in, I sat down and I was just getting my mind ready for what was about to happen with the, uh, you know, worshiping and just getting ready and have my coffee. And I didn't have my coffee at that point yet. I was holding out to a church for the coffee. So I was just kind of like, honestly, really tired. Uh, and I was just exhausted from the long week. And it was the day after Noah just just went back to his mom. So it's like getting in this new season of, again of just like, all right, back on the on the other grind of not homeschooling, but getting our house in order and stuff like that. And uh, so where was I going with that? Sorry. So this gentleman comes up to me. He, he introduces himself to me. I'm just sitting there. He comes up to me, talks to me, and he t- tells me his name's Michael. And um, he starts just sharing with me what he does. He asks me what I do. We start just really hitting it off well communicating really well about you know christ and everything uh about life and in a few short minutes he gives me his card he tells me he's in the pest control business and he has another business about like mentorship and stuff like that so i was i was interested in the mentorship uh aspect of it for sure and he was interested in uh the ministry that i do i like birds i took my card uh he told me to get his number and stuff like that tell me how today i have my buddy jorge call me and he's asking for a blessing basically about how to go about uh getting a show to be put on at mad hatter which you guys know is like the spot uh frequently did my stand-up at and uh they've still been super good to me and they allow me to still produce the show um and so he got my blessing on that and then he ended up talking to chris today um the the owner of mad hatter and locked himself in a uh, a monthly show and a weekly show at another bar that chris owns and it was just so cool because it's just like you know connecting people uh is is essential all right, back again. <laughs> the dog went inside the RV to eat Malachi's cereal. What is going on with these pups? But anyway, so yeah, Jorge, he needed a he needed some some guidance, and it was just really cool to pour into him over the phone. And I, he was actually looking for another gig as well, another job. He just recently left the pest pest control job, and he's looking to get another one. Tell me how. I just blended the two experiences that I have in the last two days, talking to Jorge, talking to Michael, connected them. Next thing you know, they're going to be having a phone call about a potential job opportunity in North Dallas. So the Lord is moving. The Lord is good. I just kind of want to come out here and just give that to you guys. I know it was super choppy because of all the interruptions, so I apologize. So we're not even going to number this episode. It's just going to be one for the for the fans that want to just tune in on a day like today, thinking about Armani, just needing a little... Uh, encouragement about just all that's still happening in real time and how God is going to give you the opportunity to minister to people if you ask him for it and if you're willing and able and obedient and and ready and even if we feel like we don't have the fruit you know to go along with it uh, every step of the way it's like we have some fruit to offer people you know we have some seeds that we can pour into people we have some uh, fruits of the spirit on us that are going to be able to bring people closer to Christ even if they believe in Muhammad you know so I'm really, and I'm really excited to just exchange, um, you know, books with that gentleman and just see what happens. You know, he's going to be, you know, a few houses down from my in-laws. So I'll be able to, you know, check in with him from time to time and see how it's going, meet the rest of his family and stuff like that. So, uh, really excited about that. It was just a really cool moment. And then Jorge called me right after that. It was another cool moment to just be able to see, 
you know, the, the squad doing good, you know, and just connecting people to other people is kind of what being a, a pastor is kind of all about too, you know, and it might not happen at a church that it's like that, you know, I mean, it'd be awesome to be at a church because then, you know, you can, you can build even more relationships and you can, you know, have more people to pour into and, and minister to and just fellowship with, you know, I need be, I need people pouring into me too. And, uh, I have a few of those people and could always use more. So, uh, never, never, never shy away from that. You know, even though I didn't want to be social at church, uh, before it started, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm not looking for brothers and sisters in Christ on a daily basis, you know, to do this life with and just, uh, connect with, uh, even if it's brief before the sermon or before the worship service starts, you know, even if it's, um, briefly in somebody's house for a few minutes, it's like those little moments, man, those little pockets, man, of, uh, putting on for Jesus is what kind of sustains you and keeps you going and lets you see the long-term, the macro effect on the kingdom, bro, the kingdom work. It's so, so awesome. Uh, it's so inspiring to me and it's just, it gets me so pumped up to just keep doing this life for Jesus because it gives me so much more to live for. You know, it really does. It gives me meaning. Um, I don't like myself, uh, my flesh self, you know, I, uh, I'm at my worst when I'm not vibing with Jesus and, uh, it's, it's awesome to be able to, uh, see the difference and just keep, you know, leaning into that, you know, choosing the spirit every day over the flesh. Uh, even when times where, you get super uh, frustrated, you know, the dog jumps in the RV. It's like, how do you handle that situation, you know? You throw the dog out and you, and you spank it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know if that's uh, the right thing to do. But, you know, she got Malachi all dirty, thinking, and that's that's the good dog. Like, I don't understand. That's my that's my dog, Birdie. You know, I got Birdie, Russ, and uh, Murphy out here. Murphy's the little stinker. Russ is a little stinker, too. Birdie's normally the sweetheart. But, um, anyway... So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you've learned from it. I hope you've been able to think about your own life in a way that is, uh, you know, giving glory to God, even even in the times where it feels like you're just slowed down, you know. And here's another quote I'll give you as well for all the moms out there. Uh, my mother-in-law said this, and it was very powerful to show that, like, God is with us so much so that he's just always waiting for us to turn to him for everything and anything, always go to him for communicating about stuff, always going for to him when you need help, when you need guidance. And she said this, she says, moms, he hears your prayers in the shower because he knows that that's the only time you get alone away from the kids without them needing you. You know, we need, we need God, you know, like God don't need us. We need God. Right. So we're able, it's basically like our father, you know, when we're kids, you know, like my, my, I don't need Malachi for for anything. He's not going to help me do anything. I have to take care of all his needs. I had to just go get the dog off of him and get him new snacks, you know, while I'm out here recording. You know, is that the is the wisest thing to be recording right now? No, he woke up from a nap and I'm trying to finish what uh, I started. Um, so with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Happy birthday to my friend Armani, man. I love you to death. I miss you so much, man. We used to just celebrate your day together. And there's nothing more in me that wishes we could do that. But, hey, I'm still doing it even on this side of it, you know. So uh, maybe I'll crack open a little brewski for you. No, I'm just playing. I don't know. Maybe. No, I'm kidding. But uh, no, I'm not. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I don't got any of the. He, bro, he used to love this beer called um, talking about beer on a Christian podcast. But, oh, man, don't judge me. Uh, he used to love this beer called High Life. And uh, it's cool because Chris Reynoso, one of his other best friends, uh, goes, goes to his uh, – his, his grave site um, and his bench that has his big, beautiful face on it, uh, looking all spiffy in his suit, uh, has his face on the bench and um, has, has a cold beer with him, man. He brings, he brings Monty a beer, he brings himself a beer, and he, and he just, you know, like the old times, you know. So uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And that's the whole, that's the whole thing about the, the, what Rob, uh, Rob Ross was kind of talking about is like the almost like wearing your religion on the outside, you know, instead of indwelling on on Christ on the inside you know it's like you know I know not to drink and get drunk and and sin and do all those things but I also know that having a beer isn't going to get my name erased from the book of life you know and I don't think I'm um sinning against God for having a beer in, in remembrance of Romani you know and I don't feel like we should shy away from uh from that and we could be wrong who knows I could be totally wrong here <laughs> you know but in this moment the way I feel and the way I don't feel conviction from it from the Lord, I might feel judgment from man. Uh, and that's, that's something completely different that I'm working through. And I'm just making sure that I'm on the right side of, uh, of the faith, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, um, am I, I don't want to, you know, lead anybody in the wrong direction by that, you know, by, you know, 
uh, saying, yeah, it's okay to get drunk. It's okay to drink, you know, as much as you want, you know, like I'm not doing that, you know, like keep in mind the context, keep it, keep in mind the heart that's attached to it. And I think a lot of times we dismiss the heart of people's actions, you know, and, um, only God knows the heart. So that's why we're not supposed to be judgy like that. We're supposed to have, you know, uh, righteous judgment at the same time. But, um, with something like that, it's like, you know, it's a beautiful thing, uh, to that Chris Renoso does with Armani. Um, and, yeah, so I miss my friend. I guess I'll just talk about that for a little bit before we wrap up. Um, and like I said on the last episode, I know I recorded a couple of days ago, but uh, Armani's family came through in a really huge way for uh, my family and the ministry and just the um, the whole, just, it was just a big God blessing uh, for sure, 100%. Um, everything attached to it uh, had God's, God's glory all over it. They ran a marathon for Armani. They raised money for the show. Uh, not for the show, for the ministry, and um, it was just really cool to just see so many people uh, contribute and just show love and pour into that, and uh, having the the, th- the three of them, Kelly, Armani, or excuse me, Kelly, George, Francesca, and Armani's mom and dad, give me a call, and just kind of seeing their big, beautiful faces on the FaceTime, give me that good news, it was, it was life-changing, man, it was, it was a day of love, when I was celebrating my sister-in-law and brother-in-law's wedding uh, at the house that we're at here. Um, in the backyard and it was a super special day and we put on the Spanish music we we're dancing and next thing you know um, I get a phone call a couple hours later on uh, 2 22 that uh that they were gonna you know send send some send some love this way and um, so yeah that, that that was that was uh that was moving and then even just last night we had somebody that loves Armani and loves the show and just recently bought a shirt posted her wearing the shirt today Stephanie in California she's contributed to the show and uh, just know that every time a contribution comes in donation comes in a shirt purchase comes in me and my wife do a little happy dance we're like yo God is good you know so uh, every time you guys do something like that it just blows us away and it just shows the power of of, uh, God providing uh, through the hearts and and the lives of the people that are in your life to be a blessing for you uh, as well so I hope you guys are doing great. I hope your your life and your walk with Christ is where it needs to be right now. And it always has room for improvement. And we know that. That's why we push each other to grow in our faith together. And uh, the fruit comes once we once we continue growing, guys. The fruit will come. So don't be bummed out if you feel like you're struggling with some, some, something and um, you can't be delivered from it. Or if you are feel like you just don't have a grip on life right now. I don't think anybody does, bro. Christ, that's what I'm saying. Naked Christianity, baby. Like... We're getting through this together. The world is throwing some, some, some spiritual warfare our, our way on the regular. The, the enemy attacks those who who love Christ the most. And just remember, he's he's got you the whole step of the way. So, much love to you guys, man. I'ma tune off and uh, talk to you guys soon. Next time on a mic. You wanna say you wanna say bye, Malachi? Bye. Say see you later. <laughs> All right, guys. See you.